Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a Pokemon that honestly I really underestimated in the Master League Premier Cup, but a Pokemon that has turned out to be surprisingly powerful. These battles were submitted to the channel by a member of the community, so many thanks for the battle submission. Now, the Pokemon in question is actually Galissapod. Galissapod did get liquidation with the Season 15 move update, and honestly, I didn't expect it to be good in the Master Premier Cup, but in these battles we see, it is genuinely a force to be reckoned with. So without further ado, let's up for the matches and check out level 50 Galissapod in the Master Premier Cup. Humping to the first match, picking up a slightly negative lead, Togekiss into Ursaluna. Gonna farm up some energy, save switch into Galissapod, and the opponent responds with a Dragonite. This team does need to bait out the Dragonite, so that way the Haxorus can do well in the back. And Galissapod, unfortunately, is going to be firing resisted charge moves here, but the good news is the Shadow Claw damage will add up. Firing off Liquidation number two, that connects and gets the defense drop. Dragonite firing off a Dragon Claw, but this will not KO. Master League Galissapod has some pretty decent bulk. Galissapod able to make the last second X Scissor. I know this is resisted, but they got a debuff. Will it KO? Yes, it will off of resisted charge moves. Galissapod wins switch and the opponent concedes a match. Hopping into the next match, we see a terrible lead, Togekiss into Metagross. Immediate save switch into the Haxorus, as Haxorus is the soft counter to Metagross on this team, with Galissapod, of course, being the hard counter. Night Slash will be no shielded by the Metagross. Metagross makes it to the Meteor Mash and will grab an early shield from the Haxorus. The opponent probably now going to look to switch now that they have shield advantage, and they send in Chestnut. So the opponent's entire team is pretty weak to Haxorus. Breaking Swipe will be no shielded by the Chestnut. Chestnut is going to have to go for Superpower if it wants to deal any meaningful damage. We see a shield Chestnut is going to go for the more expensive Frenzy Plant, but that's honestly an important bait by the opponent, as that way they're not lowering their attack any more than the Haxorus already is with the breaking swipes. Haxorus is now going to get that Chestnut's attack down to minus three, meaning that a superpower will not KO from here. Opponent is going to need to throw two charge moves. They go for superpower number one, Haxorus able to tank, but they are at superpower number two. Chestnut able to hang on with a sliver of HP and KO the Haxorus. In comes Galissapod. Galissapod gets an energy lead. In the back, it is Ursaluna, and this is doable. Galissapod with the energy lead is going to outpace, fire off the liquidation, and that does quite a lot of damage onto the Ursaluna. Ursaluna is going to return fire here with the Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch will hit for super effective damage. Galissapod able to hang on, making it to the liquidation. This is not quite going to KO, and Shadow Claws are double resisted here. Galissapod looks for the switch into the Togekiss, trying to snipe but the opponent is able to save the Ursaluna. In comes the Metagross. Metagross will go for the Meteor Mash. That's going to get rid of the Togekiss. In comes Galissapod. Farms down. Leaves with the X Scissor. Ursaluna does not have a move. Galissapod, against all odds, KOs Ursaluna and secures the win. We see yet another tough lead in the next match, Togekiss into Excadrill. We see a safe switch into the Galissapod, and the opponent is going to respond with a Charm Primarina. Charm Primarina would absolutely destroy the Haxorus, so definitely good to bait it out here. Galissapod continuing to farm up. Again, this is a matchup where the charge moves are resisted, but Galissapod still puts up a heck of a fight. They're going to be firing off a charge move, and we see a shield from the Galissapod. Galissapod going to try and make a play for switch advantage here. Galissapod farming up very close to the back-to-back -back X Scissors here. Going for X Scissor number one. We see a shield from the Primarina and making it to X Scissor number two. Getting either switch advantage or shield advantage. Opponent lets it go, giving up switch. In comes the Exca. Exca cannot farm down. Those are resisted mud shots. Galissapod makes the liquidation and that grabs the final shield from the Exca. In comes Haxorus. Haxorus unfortunately does get the counter denied there. Drill Run will do quite a lot of damage to the Haxorus. They're already at another. We will see Haxorus expend the final shield. Haxorus now looking to get rid of the Exca, but the Exca has more energy than anticipated. Exca makes the Drill Run and that will KO. In the back, it's Milotic. 
Oh my goodness, the spice from the opponent. You absolutely love to see it. But the good news for the Togekiss is that these Dragon Tails are doing absolutely nothing. Ancient Power is going to connect. What nuke move is this Milotic running? Is it the Blizzard? It's the Hyper Beam that does quite a lot of damage. Togekiss gets the farm down. Back in comes Exca. Exca will get outpaced by a singular turn, making the Ancient Power, KOing that Exca drill. And that's a good game. Hopping into the next match, leading Togekiss into Gyarados. This lead depends on the fast move for the Gyarados. Opponent Sage switches out into Excadrill, and that will be answered by Haxorus. Haxorus will be able to tank one, and then if it wants to, can farm up five counters and go for the Night Slash on the CMP tie here. Haxorus looks like he's going to go for the one shield farm down play instead. So actually sacrificing shield advantage in exchange for leaving with a massive amount of energy to threaten that Gyarados. Opponent is going to be waiting their timer here. They're going to send back in the Gyarados into the loaded Haxorus. Haxorus goes for Breaking Swipe number one. That will be no shielded. And we see Breaking Swipe number two. The opponent is on Dragon Breath as we expected. They're now double debuffed. Aggressive pivot into Galissapod. And it's a Metagross in the back. And Metagross is completely walled by Galissapod's unique typing. Galissapod goes for the liquidation here. And there's just not really anything that the Metagross can do. Earthquake, Meteor Mash, they both do the same, and they're both resisted damage here. Galissapod able to tank that fairly comfortably and go for another liquidation. We see the double shield from the Metagross. Unfortunately, we do not see any more defense drops here, but we are going to see the shield from the Galissapod. Galissapod looking to farm up a ton of extra energy here. Galissapod farming up just shy of the back-to-back -back liquidations, but a nice catch from the opponent, catching onto the Gyarados. Banks the liquidation for later, sends in the Togekiss. Togekiss, the charm goes through but not before Gyarados gets the Aqua Tail that will KO back in comes the Metagross Metagross has to try and bullet punch down and that's just not going to happen Togekiss makes the ancient power KOing the Metagross and that's a good game We've got a battle of fairy types in the next game, Togekiss versus Florges. Now, Florges does typically have the upper hand in this matchup due to the fact that it can generate incredibly fast energy with Fairy Wind, whereas Togekiss is very reliant on its fast move pressure and against a bulky Pokemon like Florges, that's not necessarily the best strategy. Florges massively over farming and throwing on perfect timing just before the flamethrower is reached. We see a shield of the disarming voice. Togekiss going for the kill shot here with the flamethrower. Let's see. Are they going to shield? Yes, they are. They commit the shield. Disarming voice will not KO here. The opponent would have to throw a moon blast. Disarming voice connects. We see a pivot into Galissapod, and Galissapod will be met with Haxorus. Galissapod firing off the early X scissor here, as of course Haxorus with Breaking Swipe is going to be able to debuff the damage that Galissapod can do in the future. Galissapod is going to no shield the breaking swipe that will of course come with the guaranteed attack drop. Galissapod going for X scissor number two here. This is going to be getting that Haxorus close to the red. Galissapod continuing to farm. Another breaking swipe is reached. Can Haxorus actually KO here or will Galissapod get to the X scissor? Yes, it will. Galissapod able to make it to the X scissor. This is double debuff, but it still KOs the Haxorus. We see a pivot into the Togekiss preventing a farm down, and Floor just fires off energy. They go for the Disarming Voice. Now we have Haxorus versus a Shadow Machamp in the back, but the Shadow Machamp, unfortunately, is a counter behind. Breaking Swipe will be shielded by the Shadow Machamp, but at this point, Haxorus is in the driver's seat of this match. Haxorus shields up the Cross Chop, going for the Breaking Swipe, and that will be game over for the Machamp. All that's left in the back is the Florges. It's very low health. Haxorus counters down a fairy type and that's game over we see a great lead in the next match togekiss versus dragonite opponent is going to be looking to save switch out of here they save switch into a chandelure look at the spice from the opponent and that will be answered with galissapod this is enough for the shadow ball we see a shield and it is the flame charge that's a bit unfortunate as that means the future flame charges are going to be doing more damage galissapod Firing off the liquidation, we see the shield from the Chandelure. Chandelure now firing off a boosted flame charge, and we will see the second shield from the Galissapod. Galissapod should be able to Shadow Claw down here, leaving with quite a lot of energy, but most importantly, keeping Switch Advantage. Switch Advantage is absolutely everything, as you cannot let the Dragonite see the Haxorus in the back. Liquidation is going to connect onto the Dragonite that is, of course, going to be resisted, but at this point, you're just trying to get as much chip damage as you possibly can. Farming up here, not going to make the X-Scissor, 
in comes the Togekiss in the back. It's Metagross. And unfortunately, I think this Metagross might end up sweeping here. We are going to see the Breaking Swipe fired by the Hagsaurus. Opponent shields the Breaking Swipe. Now the question is... At minus one, does a Meteor Mash KO here? It does not. Haxorus able to hang on, making the Night Slash. Is this Night Slash going to be enough to KO? It is a non-stab Night Slash. Metagross able to hang on. Metagross gets the farm down. Togekiss, unfortunately, will be hit with the Meteor Mash here. Meteor Mash deals massive damage. Togekiss gets the farm down, but the opponent has a Pokemon alive in the back. The good leads continue in the next match, leading into a Haxorus. Opponent save switches into Florges, and unfortunately this team does not have a steel type to punish the Florges switch in. Florges is going to be firing off a Moonblast here. We see the no shield from the Togekiss, got some nice charm damage, and now that it's chipped, in comes Galissabod. Galissabod is going to be firing off the Liquidation here. Liquidation will get the Florges deep into the red. Unfortunately, we do not see a defense drop, meaning that Galissabod, I don't believe, is quite going to be able to farm down here. It's going to be close. Galissabod can't quite farm down, so it's going to go for the X Scissor on the CMP tie. X Scissor is resisted, but it will be enough to get rid of the Florges. Back in comes the Haxorus, going for the Liquidation. Opponent is going to fire off their charge move here, going for the Breaking Swipe to win CMP and deny that energy. But now you can just fully wait your clock and you have the alignment you want. In comes the Togekiss in the back. It's Excadrill. And this is really unfortunate for the opponent. They were not able to flip switch in the mid game. And now they have terrible alignment here. Haxorus is going to look for the one shield farm down here and then just throw breaking swipe after breaking swipe into the opponent's Haxorus. Getting the full farm down here, leaving with the back-to-back -back breaking swipes loaded and the opponent, this is their final Pokemon so they have no way of resetting these debuffs for the remainder of the match. Going to throw a couple counters here, go for another breaking swipe. They are now two stages debuffed. They leave with energy, but what is that energy going to do against Togekiss? We see the no shield here. Opponent goes for the breaking swipe. That does absolutely nothing, and they concede the match. We see a familiar lead in the next match, Togekiss versus Gyarados. Again, it depends on the fast move here. We see the safe switch into the Ursaluna, and Ursaluna will be answered with the Haxorus. Haxorus will fire off the Breaking Swipe here. Breaking Swipe will be no shielded by the Ursaluna. Ursaluna has farmed up quite a lot of energy here. We will see a shield from the Haxorus. Opponent baits with a Thunder Punch. They're trying to make it to the high horsepower, but they cannot get there. That is only a Thunder Punch. We will see the no shield from the Haxorus, recognizing that with Tackle, they were not able to get there in time. Opponent is running Dragon Breath on the Gyarados, and now Haxorus, leaving with the double Breaking Swipe, is going to get massive chip damage onto the Gyarados. Going for Breaking Swipe number two here. That is going to be no shielded. We see a pivot into the Galissapod. In the back, it's Mamoswine, and Mamoswine is going to immediately concede the match after seeing the Galissapod, and that's a good game. Hopping to the next match, leading Togekiss into another Dragonite. This is absolutely fantastic, and the Dragonite is staying in. They must be core broken by a Fairy type on the lead. Either that, or they're running Hurricane. They did build up to it. No shot they actually have Hurricane. They do have Hurricane! That does massive damage. They go for the Snipe onto Metagross, and we're going to see a counter switch into the Haxorus. The safer counter switch is sending in Galissapod, but Haxorus can still do quite well here, especially now that it gets the boost. Oh my goodness, these boosted counters are about to go off. Haxorus with the boosted counters, counters down the Metagross like it's nothing, and the final Pokemon is revealed to be Togekiss. So the opponent was not actually core broken by a Togekiss on the lead, they just really wanted to Hurricane. And now we're going to see Breaking Swipe number two, continuing to debuff the Togekiss more and more and more. Going to save the Haxorus for later and send in Galissapod. Opponent sends in the Dragonite. They have now reset their debuff. Back in comes the Togekiss. Togekiss looking for a potential Ancient Power boost. We see the shield from the Galissapod. Galissapod going for the Liquidation. No baits here. Liquidation will be shielded. We do see the debuff and it couldn't come at a better time. Going for Liquidation number two. That's going to be no shielded by the opponent. They try to call the X Scissor bait and that's a good game. Hopping into the final match, picking up a dream lead, Togekiss into Haxorus, and the Metagross save switch will immediately be hard punished by Galissapod. 
Metagross is by no means a safe switch as long as Galissapod is on the team. We see a defense drop as well from the liquidation, things going from bad to worse for the opponent. Meteor Mash connects, Galissapod looking to overfarm here. X Scissor would have been enough to KO there due to the defense drop, but just to be safe in case they shield, going for the liquidation. Liquidation will be lethal, in comes the Haxorus. Haxorus is going to have a bit of a difficult time countering down here as Galissapod is quite spammy. Galissapod makes one X Scissor, it's making it to X Scissor number two. Opponent, are they going to actually try and farm down here? They're thinking about it. They get the full farm down. In comes the Togekiss. It's a Magna Zone, and they immediately concede the match. Honestly, I had zero expectations for Galissapod doing as well as it does in the Master League Premier Cup. So honestly, this is a really pleasant surprise. It's really nice to see when move updates are made and they have an impact on all three leagues. We've seen it in the Great League, we've seen it in the Ultra League, and now specifically in the Master Premier format. It looks like Galissapod is here to stay as a really, really solid pick for your team. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.